My name is Abiba Longwe. I'm at Radboud University doing my PhD there. I'm in the Department of Economics. My research is about uh, linking the investments made in reproductive health and socioeconomic development in uh, poor areas of Africa. Uh, I work closely with Dr. Yarun Smith, and our research is part uh, part of a bigger pop dev or pop pop project, which is funded by Hulet Foundation and also the Dutch scientific uh, community. In my research, the main social problems that we are. Uh, trying to address is poverty and the economic development in the poor areas in Africa. In particular, relating the uh, e poverty and economic development in relation to family planning. Uh, it is well known that in wealthier, country, in wealthier areas and by wealthier people, more effective use of family planning is, uh, is made. However, much less is known on how family planning can contribute to poverty reduction and through this economic development. I th uh, we believe that it is, if this existence can be demonstrated, it, it can help uh, African leaders to invest more in quality family planning services. Because the argument that family planning reduces the number of children may appeal less to family leaders than the argument that fa investments in family planning may contribute to poverty reduction or helps with poverty reduction and through this uh, helps e uh, economic development. And it is therefore the aim of my study to fit into this gap to find out how and in which ways family planning can contribute to poverty reduction in Africa and through this the economic development. Indeed, recently I have published an article on how family planning uh, influences uh, primary school education in subnational areas of African countries. Um, it is, when you look at it, it looks just simple, straightforward, that yes, family planning can lead to uh, more education of children, but it is, it's not that just simple because the link is kind of an indirect one. Uh, first is the availability of the family planning services and then it's the, the more the the, the more available the family planning services are, for example, the contraceptive use, if, if they are more later available and accessible by the women, and then the population tend to use more of those facilities or more of the contraceptive use. This in, in, increased usage of family planning would eventually lead to more children, m less children being born, but also who are well spaced. Uh, and, and it is this effect whereby a household or a district has fewer numbers number of births and then also uh, births which are properly spaced, that is they are not closely spaced, uh, less than two years we consider it to be space bathing. So it is this effect that eventually then leads to uh, increased uh, uh, enrollment in primary school because this study w was looking at uh, young children who are aged between 7 and 11. So we are just looking at the entry point of primary school. So let not it be confused as we are talking to the whole age group of uh, like from 7 to 15 or 7 to 20. No, we are just considering primary school going children. How are they affected? If in that household there are young uh, young children, uh, who, who uh, siblings who are less than two years old and if they are uh, closely spaced. And also uh, but the one that we are talking about now it was at district level, so that's that's how we are able to isolate this link. But to go deeply now to look uh, on a closer link, how by by what processes or how does this then closely aff affect the um, uh, enrollment itself? We find that in that is in another related article which was published in Studies in Family Planning. In that article, we may, we the main findings we found is that. If a child has a very short space preceding uh, birth interval, then the chance of that child to go to school were highly reduced. So 
among, among other factors that were there were studied, but the most important factor that reduces uh, children's ability to attend school w that we found was the short birth spacing interval. I completely agree with this policy advisor that uh, context, uh, we should explain how important the context is. But to have such kind of study whereby you want to explain the role of the context in uh, the effects of family planning on economic development, you need uh, many contexts, comparing contexts that you should uh, co compare, preferably as many as you can have. Therefore, in my study, what I've done is I've made a, 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 a very large information on many women, but also on many uh, uh, African regions. I have 225 regions, subnational areas of African countries, and on this on this uh, data, I'm, I have studied how context is important in relation to the effects of family planning on education. For example, I've found that those children who come already from less favorable houses, that is, those children who already have a short preceding birth interval, that is of less than two years, are less able to benefit from the household resources, for example, uh, the wealth of the household, but also parental education, because they are the, in the, the, the context they live in. But also th those who are already living in poor regions, they are able not to benefit from the better um, accessibility of the female or of the family planning. So that's, that's here now you can see that it is indeed important because these effects are more, pro the negative effects of, of poor family planning are, are more pronounced in the regions that uh, are poor or the, the, fa the, fa the children or the families who have better, uh, who have already poor family planning outcomes will not be able to benefit from the resources that are available in the context that they are living like education investments. But also in relation to the same point, I have studied on how, uh, on the negative effects on women's employment uh, of the family planning outcomes. For example, I have assessed how more births and short spacing of those births can affect a woman's ability to participate in, in employment outside the agriculture sector. What I found there is that yes, if, if a woman has, le has children who are closely spaced, work less in, 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 in an agriculture sector, but what is key is the context plays a bigger role because this problem is not just a problem for all the women. Apart from being a problem for all the women, it is more pronounced for the women who are more educated and those who live in the urban. So here you can clearly see how the context plays a role. And it is important for us to say how the context matters because then this will help the policy makers to tailor their efforts more effectively. For example, they would choose maybe to target uh, more groups which are in need or just uh, those regions that are more in need. That, that's how I would tackle that. Thank you very much for that important question. Indeed, in my previous work at International Crops Institute for the semi arid Tropics in Malawi, where I worked as an economist uh, at the scientific officer level, I was involved in some minor application of research findings to practical solutions on the ground to help farmers with some decisions based on whatever the research we have done and we have found. Now coming to my work, um, it is important also because just finding, doing the analysis and coming up with the outcomes. It's not enough to me, it's not satisfying enough because it is part of my research agenda that I should be able to inform the uh, policy decisions uh, uh, making process. And how can I do that? I can only contribute if I translate my research into policy actions. And uh, with, um, with, with that, I think it is also in, this, in, the, in line with the broader 
aim of the POPOF project and also the, the, the project that recruited me as a PhD uh, because that is the aim that we, we provide evidence for which policymakers can can use and it is on that point that now that I have at least a, a full um, a full synthesis of what my outcomes are I can say I have some uh, important information it is clear from my findings as we have discussed here that not only is family planning important for reducing births or for spacing births, but it's also important, it goes beyond that. It's also important because it contributes to poverty reduction or socioeconomic uh, uh, development in the poor rural areas of Africa. And then there, uh, you can see clear in one statement, I can say yes, investment in family planning equals investment in economic development. But then I would therefore suggest some actions that can be done. How would we do it? I would suggest that policymakers or people in a program decision making positions, we, they should invest more in family planning. How, for example, first we can start with investing in information campaigns in order to promote the uh, contraceptive use behavior change. We need more and more women to be using. We know the level that is, is there. Yes, currently we cannot say no woman is using. They are already using, but we need to promote that behavior so that we can get more and more women using. That can be only achieved through the information campaigns, media campaigns, or other means of, of passing on message, especially to talk about uh, the negative effects, the side effects, to clear the fears from these women about the side effects of using contraceptives so that they can more and more use. Because in some other studies you hear that m the main barrier that people are not using contraceptives, it's because they fear of the side effects. But sometimes maybe they, they have not tried. So these information campaigns would help. And then the second action would be to to invest more. The f maybe f individual finance ministers of different governments in Africa should now invest more in plan pa family planning services, for example, to ensure that contraceptives are later available, but also not just later available, they can be easily accessed by people in rural areas and also in urban areas. They should understand that by investing in family planning, they in that way indirectly they are going to also achieve their economic uh, education goals that they, they want to or their uh, women empowerment. So the main, main message is really uh, improving the funding or the investments in the family planning by policymakers. Thank you very much.